you guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I wanna to talk to you about what the difference is between using a nail and a screw. So basically, there's a few different applications for each. We're just gonna go over some basic ideas and uh, things that we use on our job site. So if you like what you see today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. All right, so basically what you see here, we have some standard construction nails. These are called collated nails because there's little plastic strips that hold them together in sequence so you can load them into a nail gun. So a lot of the nails that we use are used in a nail gun. Uh, there's different types of collated nails. There's paper collated nails and there's plastic collated nails. And then screws, there's different types of screws as well. Uh, any type of screws that we use in construction must be coated just like the nails have to be galvanized So the screws also must be coated to withstand corrosion resistance and last longer in the elements so uh, Anything that we use has protective coatings on it. So we get into the difference obviously to hand nail something takes probably the longest uh, to do so I'm gonna nail this board to this beam chunk right here and I'm just gonna use a hammer and a lot of times uh, you know old school or if you don't happen to have an air compressor or a cordless nail gun this is how you do it this is the old school original way to do it oh always wear your safety glasses all right a lot of framers can do that in many less wax than me I'm old and have bad wrists so there you go all right, so that's that's a great way to attach a board to a beam. Uh, one nail and, and it's pretty snug. If I wanted to use a screw, it's a lot faster. And an impact driver. And we can screw it in real quick just like that. The difference between this nail and this screw is that the nail will allow flexing in an earthquake situation. So the nail's not gonna snap. This screw is made of carbon steel. It's not stainless steel, so this screw in an earthquake may snap. So uh, even though this is faster and probably has more holding power than the nail does, the nail is gonna flex with movement. So expansion, contraction, uh, sway, and in uh, unfortunate uh, circumstances like earthquakes, a nail may hold better than a standard screw. That's why we don't use carbon screws a whole bunch in our building. We actually use structural screws. So Simpson makes structural drive screws, strong drive SD connector screws, we'll say, for different applications. So right now I have a number 10 by two and a half inch screw. This has much more holding power than a nail does, but it's also rated structural. So in seismic activity or movement or expansion and contraction, these screws are gonna hold better. They make these an inch and a half and two and a half inch lengths. These are also designed to be used with their joist hanger. And so we kind of do a hybrid when we start hanging joists onto the house. So I'm gonna show you guys that right now. You can use inch and a half SD screws to screw your joist hanger to the two by 10 or whatever, whatever size framing you're using. We just happen to be using two by 10 for this particular video and the current build we're on. So you can take your inch and a half screws and you can put those in the face of your joist hanger like so, okay? And that's an approved attachment method. We also can get collated inch and a half Tico nails. I call them Tico nails. They're not, that's just a trade name. It's kind of like Band-Aid. They're actually joist hanger nails. So they make joist hanger nails in inch and a half lengths and in two and a half inch lengths. There's differences for using those for each uh, situation that you're in. The inch and a half joist hanger nails should only be used in this section of the joist hanger right here. Not in this section here. Don't ever use a short joist hanger nail in the angled section of a joist hanger. They're just designed to go in like that, okay? 
so uh, these are collated. So obviously these go into a joist hanger gun. We just obtained a cordless one from Metabo HPT. So stay on the lookout for that review. Normally we use the joist hanger gun and these joist hangers and we're just popping them, popping those in quickly with a gun, okay? So you'll get those in like that. And once that's installed, then you have a joist that goes in like so. So I've been told by my Simpson rep that you can either use a specialized joist hanger nail that's three inches long, or you can use a two and a half inch structural drive screw to go through here and into the joist. And the reason they want you to use this is because they want du double penetration. They want you to go through the joist, and into the ledger. Now, obviously there's not a joist installed right now, so it's gonna flex. But you can see that the screw is penetrating through the joist and into the ledger board, and that's gonna happen four times per joist hanger, per joist. And that's an excellent way to attach your joist to your ledger, which keeps things tight. So whenever we're hanging a joist hanger on the house, we use nails on the sides, on the flange, and then we use two and a half inch structural drive screws on the angles because I feel those hold a little bit better and they're rated for seismic activity as well. As we're building a deck, we're either using stainless steel screws, some carbon screws, lots of galvanized nails, depending on the application, and then a lot of the times we're using construction fasteners. Now construction fasteners are usually some kind of a fastener screw. Fasten Master makes a lot of different types of construction screws. We use some called ledger locks. We use some called timber locks. If we're gonna attach something to the house, we're gonna use a ledger lock instead of a nail. Cause a ledger lock is rated equal to a half inch lag bolt and it's gonna hold very well and it's gonna protrude less through the rim joist or the ledger board so that it doesn't crack it as much. So that's why I like to use construction fasteners a lot because they're rated for loading. They're not just going to uh, snap in certain instances. So definitely take a look at those products and thanks for watching this video today. I really appreciate it. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to click that subscribe button. I'm sure there's several things that I missed in this video. So if you want to leave a comment below to ask, I'll get back to you with some answers. Thanks for watching guys. Have a great day.